Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing. So I wanted to do a short little video here and just show you how you can create your own little automatic gain compensation plugin. So if you're adding some sort of distortion or tape simulation or even some of the, the compressors that mimic the, um, you know, the old compressors, um, then, you know, you know that as you're driving the input, the output is simultaneously being, you know, gained up as well. And then it's hard to judge, you know, the difference in the sound without having to go and start turning the output gain down and all that stuff. So it's more for, you know, for the beginner, for the seasoned mixer and, you know, the veteran or whatever. You're probably used to the workflow of that. And, um, you know, this trick or this tip, I should say, it's probably, you know, counterintuitive for you just because your workflow has already been defined over a certain period of time. Yeah, if you're new to the to the mixing world and you want something that's, um, you know, immediately gaugeable for you to hear the difference between the before and after and you can kind of hear as you're pushing and driving a plug-in harder, then this might work for you. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download this um, uh, this Blue Cat plugin here, the, the Gain Suite plugin. It's free uh, for Mac users. It's compatible as well, 32-bit, 64, you know, runs the whole gamut there. So we need to download this plugin and we need to load up two instances. So we load up one instance before our plugin of choice. And in this case, my plugin of choice is the Camel Crusher. Then we need to load up the second instance, which goes after the Camel Crusher. So effectively, the way it works is first plugin over here on the left is going to be our input gain. Second plugin is going to be our, you know, distortion or whatever plugin you want to use. And then the third plugin is going to be our output gain. So ideally what we're trying to do is as we increase the input gain to drive the distortion unit, we want the output gain to be decreased, you know, simultaneously as the input gain is going up. So we need to do a little bit of setting up here. So with the input channel here, the first instance, we need to click this not connected. And there we go. And then we select whatever group we want. I'm just going to select group A. And then when we go over to our output gain plugin, we need to select not connected again, and then select the same group, group A, same group as we selected on the first plugin here. And then what we need to do with the link options is for the first one, keep it on relative. And then the link options on the second one, keep it on reverse, where it doesn't come on reverse, it comes on relative, but you need to choose reverse, turn off relative. So what happens now is the relative, if we increase the gain, you know, six dBs or whatever, it's going to remain at 6 dBs and the reverse plug in here as as we're increasing this to 6 dBs this is going to you know take away 6 decibels so I'll show you right now as we increase you can see the plug in to the right it's decreasing whatever amount of dBs that I increase so I increase 40 dBs it takes away 40 dBs so that's all we really need to do and then what I'll do is I'll show you I have this drum loop here so I'm going to turn everything off so the way the camel crusher is set up right now a uh, volume is full. The only thing I have engaged is this master and this distortion. So the volume's full, the mix is full. Distortion and tube are set to, you know, their very starting points. And so basically no distortion is being added to the sound whatsoever right now. And if there is, it's probably like a point zero whatever percentage. So it's very, very minimal. It's not noticeable. But as I increase the gain of the first plug in here, I'm gonna be driving this unit and adding a ton of distortion from the tube and mechanical distortion. So um, what I'll do is I'll bypass everything and I'll play it and then I'll engage everything and you'll see just on their stock settings it's not changing the sound whatsoever. So no change whatsoever. So now what we can do is let me load these two plugins up. We got the input and the output. So the input gain is on the left, the output gain is on the right. The Camel Crusher is just sitting there nice and pretty. So as this is playing, I'll start increasing the gain, and you'll see that as I increase the gain, first of all, this pe these peaks are going to be decreasing because as you add distortion, you know, obviously you're going to be adding a little bit of compression with that as well, as well as some harmonics and stuff. But that aside, you know, the, the relative volume for the most part should stay the same. So let's check that out now. So you can see the peak volume went down quite a bit and there is some noticeable distortion. You can definitely hear it, but the relative volume, like I said, you shouldn't have noticed that much of a change. Like it's pretty consistent. So let's do that one more time.
So I think adding about 13 dBs is probably the, the zone that I want to be in. Well, maybe anywhere from 10 to 13 dBs is the zone that I want to be in for volume. But since our peak volumes went down quite a bit, that means that we can actually increase our output volume now. So uh, what we can do is we can do two things. We can now ungroup them, turn them off. And now we can start compensating for this output gain here, or you can add another plugin. You can add, you know, for instance, the L1 limiter, and then um, just see where the, the peak volume is and then try to bring it back up to where it was before. So if we want, we can turn these plugins off and just leave the, uh, the L1 on, and let's see where it was peaking before we added the distortion. So I'm just going to say it's about an average of negative or yeah, negative 6 dB. So let's bring this down. We'll link them together, bring it down to negative 6. So that's our starting point. So let's engage uh, the blue cat plugins here so that we can add some distortion. And then what we can do is we can uh, bring this down to wherever our peaks are hitting now. So now it's back up to the same volume, the peak volume it was before. And what I actually did was I loaded um, another example of the drums here. You can see before and after. So before just means that there's no processing. It's the exact same drum loop. And then the after is the drum loop with all the processing. So let's uh, turn this off and let's turn it on before. And then what I'll do is I'll try to quickly uh, change um, to the after so that you can hear the before and after difference. So you can see there that, you know, a lot more volume has been added. Um, the, the peaks and the transients are a lot more stable now. So depending on the track you're doing, if you're doing like a, a rock song or you're doing something that has to be, you know, very modern sounding and in your face, then you don't want those drums to be bouncing all over the place. So you want them just there in your face. And this is just one way to do it. I mean, you don't have to add distortion. You can do whatever you want. Compression, parallel compression, um, adding some tape, you know, whatever you want. But... Like I said, if you're a pro and you've been doing this for a long time, then adding all these plugins here to kind of get that output volume may not make sense to you. But, you know, like I said, if you're a little bit inexperienced, you're a beginner, you're just, you know, learning how to do this sort of stuff, then having this gain plug in here before and after will allow you to hear what you're doing to the, the, the track without actually increasing the output volume. So... So yeah, so that's just a little tip there. Um, hopefully that helped you out. Um, it's a pretty cool little technique and um, hopefully you learn from that. So anyways, until the next video, I will uh, talk to you later. Take care.